<laughs> Quality. Selfie. <laughs> This is the robot so far. We've gone a long way in production. It's looking awesome. It has eight servo motors, two that control the flaps, and the one that controls the deployment mechanism, which is the one that's hidden down here. And the rest are just regular servo motors to control the fins and the camera tilt. There you go. I've written a little program just to test the motors. So it just goes through full extension and retraction of the flaps, far left, far right for all the fins and just tilts the camera back and forth. The deployment one, it's not finished yet, we need to put the, couple, the coupler in. Basically, what it's going to do is turn the closing pin and deploy the parachute. So the pilot chute sits in here. We can go through what that is if yeah. you want. It's, so this is a skydiving rig. This is where the main parachute is and this is, uh, this is what's called a pilot chute. What you would do is grab it and Throw it. Hopefully, <laughs> it catches there, um, and it pulls this pin that then extracts the main canopy. So, opens the bag up, and that's the the bag that contains the parachute and all the lines. So the parachute's big. It sits in the middle of the robot. Pilot chute is very small. Packs into a tight space, and that's going to sit in the tube. This is the plate that holds the closing pin at the right distance and the pivots for the lid. Let me find the lid. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> closing pin opens, lid opens, pilot chute comes out. Yeah, it's one of the few parts that you can actually see from outside, so we wanted a nice finish, and I think that's quite nice. Also, because we were going to make it by computer, we optimized the inside to save some weight. So, yeah, came out quite nice. This piece here, that looks like a T, the end of it there, with, this, with the bigger circle, that's going to hold the brake lines. So that attaches to the tail of the parachute, which is a square parachute, and by pulling on one of them, you change the, you slow that side down and basically steer the parachute. And that motion pulls the brake line through this hole there, and that pulls the canopy, wherever it is. This is our microprocessor that we're going to be using throughout the project. The reason we're using that and not the smaller version is we have so many different things to connect to it. We simply don't have enough pins on the small one. The Arduino is going to sit in on these brackets here behind the camera. Turn it off. The cables underneath it are all going to be tucked in that space underneath the parachute tray. Because the, the parachute is going to sit in this space here. This space. <laughs> and all the, all, the, all the cables and connections have to go underneath it. We're currently waiting on the vision chip and it tells the Arduino where it is relative to the skydiver, so it's the eyes of the robot basically. And those mount here next to the GoPro on, on, on this bracket here. Yeah. This is a skydiving helmet. It's not the nicest one, I don't take good care of it, but inside it, next to my ear, is a what's called an audible altimeter. So you set three altitudes, so first alarm, second alarm, third alarm. It makes a very loud and annoying beeping noise at each of those altitudes, so you can you know, use the first one to separate from other people, the second one to pull your main, and the last one to pull your reserve if you're still going at terminal velocity, which you shouldn't be. This is uh, an interface that most skydivers are used to. And so I base the design of our control on sort of this three button layout. And I made this thing. <laughs> it's got uh, a display, three buttons, five LEDs for interface. So let's plug it in. Uh, let's hope it still works. <laughs> Yay! So the first part of the program is to set the altitude of deployment. Uh, we chose 3000 feet to be the minimum, so you can't go any further and about 6,500 feet to be the maximum. Uh, then you change the next thing, which is angle, and you just select the degrees above you that you want it to be. So if you want it to add 40 degrees above you, then it would just film looking down at you at 40 degrees. And then finally the distance, 
and that is in meters, so you just choose how far away from you you want the robot to be flying. And then the last one is to reset the GPS coordinates and the altitude. And you only do that once. So you press and hold, and it's ready. You can only set the GPS coordinates once, so that if you accidentally turn it back on on the plane, it doesn't choose to fly somewhere and try to find its coordinates again. Yeah, I had to put it on two layers because we couldn't fit all the components on a single one, so we just stacked two. But it's quite simple, actually. Quite happy with it. So this is our GPS board. The pink square is the antenna, and it's got a processor in, in it to calculate position from the time signal sent out by satellites. The steady red light means it's searching for satellites. So when that starts flashing, it means we've got something. Cool, so now that we have a fix, we can show that it's actually working. The date, the time, the altitude above sea level, the course and the distance to London. I don't know why we have that, <laughs> but that's 175 something, probably km. It's working and we're gonna use it to navigate our parachute to a pretty fine landing area. So this is the barometric pressure sensor that we're using. That tiny square there is a barometer and it measures atmospheric pressure. So it shows pressure, altitude, and uh, real altitude. Pressure changes because of altitude. So the higher you are, the lower the pressure. But it also changes because of weather. So you need to account for that. Um, so you set a zero, and from that zero you can know, relative to that point, how high you are. So when you reset the robot, it's just going to zero its current altitude to where you land. Hopefully this will be ready to test in the wind tunnel, a full-scale wind tunnel, not our backyard wind tunnel, um, in a couple of weeks. So we can, we're going to fly with it if it's ready. It's stuck. <laughs> I've lost a <the> GoPro. <laughs> yeah, as much as I want to look good for camera, I also want to get this right. It's pretty close to 90 degrees, isn't it? All we need to do now is drill for five holes and we're done. Perfectionist, <laughs> definitely. Certainly for this project, because everything has to be so accurate. 